ask you to pause for a moment right now and bring to mind the last dream you can remember, whether this was last night, last week, or last month. Now, my bet is the dream you're thinking of probably incorporates some people, places, and experiences from your real life memories. Maybe you dreamed of a conversation you had with your mother uh, yesterday. Maybe you dreamed of an old friend you haven't seen in many years. Maybe you dreamed of the trip you'll be going on next month. Well, the question I'll be talking about today is, why did you dream that? Why did those particular experiences from your life show up in your dream? And indeed, why do any of us dream the strange, bizarre, and seemingly random things that we do? Well, today I'll be offering one possible answer to that question, which is that dreaming reflects kind of a post-processing of memory in the sleeping brain, a process that we psychologists call memory consolidation. Now, I know in your life you've heard many different explanations for why we dream and why we dream what we do. And most of those have focused on dreaming as originating from some mysterious or unknown provenance. Hundreds of years ago, for example, it was most commonly thought that dreams were hidden messages from gods or spirits. And then, of course, around the turn of the last century, Freud popularized the notion that dreams are instead hidden messages from a hidden part of our own minds the unconscious mind. Well, as interesting as those ideas are, there's actually little or maybe no scientific evidence that dreams arise from either of those mysterious sources outside the self. Instead, neuroscientists like me view dreaming as the natural result of a normal brain process that unfolds during sleep, this consolidation of memory. And there's a few reasons why I think dreaming does arise from our memory. First of all, in the last several decades, neuroscientists have discovered that specific patterns of brain activity representing our recent memories are replayed back again when we fall asleep. Now, that's a pretty big claim. So let me step back and explain for a moment what I mean by that. This replay of memory was first discovered in rodents. In a rat's brain, in an area called the hippocampus, deep inside the medial temporal lobe of the brain, uh, there is a special type of cell called a place cell. And place cells are called place cells because they only become active or fire when I'm standing in a particular place. So in my hippocampus, there is a place cell that fires only when I am standing in this particular spot. Let's call it cell 85. And then there's another place cell that fires only when I'm standing in this particular spot, say cell 27. And another that fires only when I'm standing here, say cell 18. So what this means is that as I move across this stage, we could define my movement through space as just a sequence of brain cell firings. 85, 27, 18, or 18, 27, 85. And the discovery is when a rat or a human falls asleep, these sequences that represent our real life experiences play back again when we fall asleep, just as if the real experience were unfolding again. 87, 25, 15, over and over and over again. And the accuracy of these sequences is good enough so that just by analyzing a rat's brain activity, we can see where it is walking 
in the maze that it experienced in wakefulness. We can see from its sleeping brain that now the rat is dreaming that it's running ahead, turning right, heading toward the cheese. And this replay of memory in the sleeping brain might explain why sleep is so good for human memory. In fact, across the last decades, we have discovered that if you sleep after you learn something, you'll remember that information better later on in humans and animals. And this holds true for a wide different variety of types of learning. So this is whether you're talking about memorizing words or maybe learning how to type or solving a problem. And the benefit of sleep holds true whether you're talking about a very short daytime nap or maybe a full night of sleep. In all of these instances, sleeping after learning boosts memory for whatever it is that you learned just prior. But it's not just sleep that boosts memory. Another piece of evidence that leads me to my views is that when humans sleep and then dream about something that they just learned, their memory is especially improved. For example, in one series of studies in our own laboratory, we had human participants run through a virtual maze, a 3D style virtual maze on the computer. And using a game controller, they had to escape the maze over and over and over again. Well, participants who were randomly assigned to sleep after this learning task boosted their memory. Not surprising based on prior research, but also those who slept and reported that they dreamed about the maze improved their ability to find the exit 10 times more than participants without the maze-related dreams. So there's another piece of evidence that leads me to my view that dreaming is a result of activating memory in the brain. But at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, well, that neuroscience, that's all well and good, but my dreams are not a simple replay of memory. My dreams are strange, weird, bizarre things that could never happen in real life. And you may be right. Maybe you didn't dream of a conversation you had yesterday with your mother. Maybe in your dream, you were speaking to your mother, and then she put on two skis made of banana peels and slid down a mountain of ice cream. OK, that didn't happen in real life. That is not a replay of any one real experience that you had. But what we know is that when memories from your life do appear in dreams, they rarely appear in their entirety. Instead, the dream will take bits and pieces of several different memories from the previous days, weeks, or even years, and combine those together into a novel, bizarre, but sometimes useful, unique scenario that does not mimic exactly any one real life event, but combines together several of those. So perhaps you did dream of your mother because you spoke to her recently, but maybe you also ran into your friend's mother at Baskin Robbins eating ice cream, and ice cream reminds you of the banana splits that you used to get at the ice cream store when you went there as a child. So in fact, the dream is not so similar to any one experience, but these seemingly random and unrelated elements, the mother, the ice cream, the bananas, are each drawn from separate memories and pulled together into a semi-coherent whole. So to recap, what I've told you about is some evidence from neuroscience that one, in humans and animals, your recent experiences are replayed by your brain when you fall asleep. And what's more, this activity during sleep boosts your memory, improves your ability to remember information later on. 
But that's especially the case when those replayed memories make it into the conscious experience of our dreams. So to me, this suggests that dreaming might not be quite so mysterious as it's often discussed as being. Instead, dreaming might be the natural, logical result of this process of memory reactivation and consolidation that happens each night when we fall asleep and functions to strengthen and stabilize memories over time, converting them into a more permanent form of long-term storage. In fact, this is thought now to be one of the fundamental functions of sleep, that this consolidation process is required to take a freshly minted new memory and turn it into this stable long-term memory. So I would tell you that dreaming is not just a curiosity, it's not a silly waste of time, and it's not a hidden message, either from the gods or from your unconscious mind. Instead, dreaming may really be a side effect of the hard work that your brain is doing processing memories while you sleep.